Hey everybody, it's Lost in Thought, and this is a math presentation on triangle numbers, and you'll see why they're called triangle numbers in a second. So let's say you have some triangle, uh, where you have, you know, one block on the first row, two on the second, three on the third, four on the fourth, and five on the fifth, and it just keeps going until you have, you know, n on the nth row. Uh, but let's say you wanted to add all those numbers up. So obviously, you know, when you have um, one on the first, it's just one, and then two, you have to add one to that. So that give, that, that will give you uh, three, and then plus three is six, plus four is 10, and five is 15. Uh, but what happens when you have n blocks at the bottom row? Uh, well, let's start looking at the pattern. So I have here, as I mentioned before, you have 1 and then you have 3, 6, 10, 15. Um, so on the first row, this is just more of a, a different illustration of that. 1 becomes 1, 2 becomes 3, 3 becomes 6, 4 becomes 10, and 5 becomes 15. Kind of like, you know, the function thing. Uh, the left-hand column would be the input, and it becomes the right-hand column. So, um, you'll notice that 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 1 and a half is 3, and you see the left-hand column uh, before the time sign, this is what the row number is, and the right-hand column, uh, once again, is the output. So then you have 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 2 and a half is 10, and 5 times 3 is 15. So this pattern just keeps on going where you add 0.5 uh, to the multiplier every single time you go up. So I found out that the pattern was um, n times 0.5n plus 0.5. And this is actually the way I figured it out on my own. In sixth grade, I was staring at my bathroom wall, and there was, you know, a pyramid shape, and I figured out, oh, well, it just keeps going by... And so I realized that uh, it was n times 0.5n plus 0.5. And the actual way it's generally written is n times n plus 1 over 2. Um, it's the same thing, because you just pull out that 1 half from the section there. However, the way that it was originally discovered, I think, or one of the ways it was discovered, at least by Gauss was that if you have, um, let's say, you know, 100 numbers that you wanted to add up. Well, that means that you have 100 over 2 pairs that add up to 101. See, 1 times 1 plus 100 is 101, 2 plus 99 is 101, and you just keep going until you get, you know, 49 and 51 or whatever. Uh, but yeah. So you have 100 over 2 pairs that add up to 101. Uh, so that will just give you 50 times 100. No, I'm sorry. Before, when I said 49 plus 51, I meant 50 plus 51. But yeah, so you have 50 times 101 uh, as your answer, which comes out to 5,050, I think. Um, but anyway, this also suggests that it's n times n plus 1 over 2. Uh, because as you can see, the n here is 100, and since we have 100 over 2 pairs, I just pulled the 2 under all of it, since it's all multiplied together anyway. So this is um, the sum as n goes from 0 to k. Um, if you ever see this, there you go. That's how you figure it out. It's just a nice, easy formula to um, know how it works. And this time, I do have proof. Um, it's not the normal way to prove something. It's called an inductive proof. Um, but it's it still works as proof. So let's say that we have the sum as n goes from 0 to 1. Well, obviously it's 
1. We know that. Um, and this is going to be called our base step. Now let's use our formula, and we have 1 times 1 plus 1 over 2, and that is also 1. So it works out. They're the same. So if I can prove that as I go up by 1 every single time, I'm going to get the next number, you know, um, then it, it should work every single time. It's kind of like a ladder. Um, if I have, you know, uh, somewhere to get on the ladder, and I can always climb one up, then it's going to work every single time. I can always climb another step to the ladder. So, don't get freaked out by the next page. I'm going to explain everything, but you're going to see a lot of symbols just because I'm lazy and I don't want to write everything out. Yeah, it looks a little scary, but it's not that bad. So, the S with the P means suppose. Um, it's a nice, easy way to write suppose. And it also makes sense because S and P are two letters of suppose. Um, and then the backwards E means there exists. M is just, you know, our variable. So suppose there exists a variable M. And then the funky E is, um, it, it means that M is an element. And the, the Z, it's not really a Z, it's kind of a weird looking Z because it has the little stripe in the middle of it. Um, but yeah, suppose there exists M is an element of, Z means um, all integers, but the plus at the top right corner means positive. So suppose there exists M, which is an element of all positive integers, and then the backwards little funky E means, um, I think it's yeah, such that. So, uh, suppose there exists m is an element of all positive integers such that uh, the sum as k goes from 1 to m uh, of k. That means that um, m plus 1, as, as k goes from 1 to m plus 1, uh, you have, you know, 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up till m minus 1 plus m plus m plus 1. Well, we've shown that um, it would be, you know, this here, the left-hand side, all the way up until m plus 1, would be our formula. Uh, I don't... I accidentally wrote a plus right there, just disregard that. It should be at times. Uh, don't know why I wrote it like that, but just ignore it. Um, see, it went away because I was being an idiot when I was drawing this. Um, so then we can multiply the r m plus 1 there by 2 over 2, um, which will give us a common denominator, and we can add those together over the same denominator of 2, and so we have m times m plus 1 plus 2 times m plus 1. And I hope you get how to factor and stuff, like if you've ever, you know, seen something times something plus something times that same something, um, so for instance m plus 1 here, it means that we can write it like m plus 1 times m plus 2, because m plus 1 is used twice, see m plus 1 here, same m plus 1 here. Now we take m plus 2 and we can write it here. So, yeah. Now what we can do with that is we can break m plus 2 up into m plus 1 plus 1 over 2 at the end. Now, you'll remember our original formula is n times m plus 1 over 2. That means that if n were m plus 1, it would be m plus 1 times m plus 1 plus 1 over 2. Which, guess what? 
Goss rules. Because he was right. So you see m plus 1 times m plus 1 plus 1 over 2, and that's what the formula should come out to be. So, Goss rules. Because he was the one that figured it out. I don't know if he proved it or not, but he did figure it out. So, Goss, you're awesome. Um, now, I plan on, in the future, doing the first uh, n, the fir the sum of the first n squared, and I might get to cubed and so on. I won't really have proofs for cubed and so on. I'm trying to figure out a pattern as it goes up. I've actually got the first um, nine formulas for the first, you know, n and squared and cubed and to the fourth, so on, some terms. Um, but yeah, so thanks for watching and down below in the little description thing I'm going to post other topics that I plan on covering. Um, it's going to get pretty big soon, hopefully, and I'll have a lot of things to cover. Uh, so that should be a lot of fun.